Good morning guys and welcome back to another video here from the Copper Canyon in Mexico. Today is our final day here. It's our last day in the Copper Canyon. So we are going, we're gonna take it easy. We're gonna go to one of the most famous viewpoints here known as Divisadero. I'll show you guys when we get there. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. And then we'll see if we can do a little bit of hiking. If not, you know, we'll just see what there is to do, but it should be a pretty chill day. The weather looks pretty good. I mean, the sky is blue. You've got the sun out. So hopefully it's gonna be a good day. All right, so the walk now to the Visadero is gonna take maybe about an hour and a half. So let's start making our way over there. Well, guys, not long after we finally made it here. This is Divisadero. The place itself is just like centered right along the edge once again. But what's different about this place is that it's on the other side of the canyon. So what we've been seeing this whole time has always been on the western side. So you've been seeing the adventure park and everything. But from this side, you see the ridge blocking the adventure park. So actually you're getting an even better view of the Copper Canyon from this side here. There are a couple of viewpoints here, so we're gonna go check those out. There's also, I think, a couple hikes that we can do, so we are going to do those as well. The thing about Divisadero is that there's actually a train station right here. So, as I've mentioned before, El Chepe, which is the only passenger train in the entire country of Mexico, runs through the Copper Canyon. And the most famous stop is Divisadero, which is right here. Now usually if you take the train, the train will stop here for about 15 minutes. You'll get a chance to just go to the viewpoint and that's it. But if you wanna really explore the place, you wanna maybe do some of the hikes or look at more of the viewpoints or take more time, then you're gonna to need to stay here or you can walk here and enjoy this place more, which is exactly what we're doing today. Now the entire area is actually kind of like a little small town. There's a pretty big like viewpoint hotel built on one side. There's a couple of viewpoints on the other side. So overall, it's actually pretty touristy and you can tell there's a lot of shops that are open to sell to tourists, whether it's like local arts or jewelry, magnets, stuff like that. But I think either because of COVID or because there's just not that many people around, most of the stores are actually closed. So the entire area is really, really quiet. There's nobody here. Now the train will usually come at about 11 a.m. So maybe in about an hour, this place will be a little bit more lively with a lot more people. But for now, I've basically had the entire place to myself and it's been a pretty cool experience. You can see right here, actually right to my right side, that there's a lot of these vendor stalls that are supposed to be selling things, but because of COVID, there's absolutely nobody here. Nobody's put up their stalls. It's just no business. There's no point in putting up a store if nobody's coming to buy your stuff. So it's just really, really quiet. There's just nobody here at all. Nobody's doing business. Nobody's selling things. I mean, I guess that does kind of add to the atmosphere when people come up and try and sell you things, but also you get to enjoy the canyon more without that. So there's a trade-off, but right now there's just absolutely nobody and there's also no tourists here either. If 
there's one really cool thing you have to do when you're here in Divisadero, it's to cross the hanging bridge or the Puente Colgante. And it just stretches across the valley and we're gonna cross it right now. I'm currently on the middle of the bridge and it doesn't look that bad but it's actually kind of scary. The good thing is that the walkway is completely like covered up with metal so you don't see the bottom of the valley so that kind of helps. But it does like, it does shake quite a bit and because of the wind sometimes it does make quite a bit of noise and you feel like you may lose your footing but it's like pretty safe I would say from Mexican standards at least. All right, I'm gonna get to the other side before I actually crash into something. So this right here is the train stop. You can see the tracks that are right behind me. And usually when the Chepe comes through here, it'll stop right here at Divisadero where you'll have 15 minutes to go and check out all the viewpoints. The coolest part is that on the way down into the viewpoints, you have this like alleyway full of food and clothes and markets and everything, souvenirs and everything. And they're always trying to get you to buy stuff. Even with COVID and everything, they're still open, which is fantastic but it's just so much energy in there. And of course the food smells amazing. I'm not really hungry right now, but maybe later we might consider getting some food. So this right here is the map of all the hikes you can do around Barrancas del Cobre. And yesterday we went from right here all the way to there, which is the Eagle's Nest. And then we walked all the way back to Posada Barrancas, but today we're all the way up here at Divisadero, but I don't think we're gonna hike all the way back to the same place we were at yesterday, but we might do something maybe up here if there's a path that we can follow. Well, on the other side of Divisadero, it turns out there is a little bit of a hike that we can do that will take us up to a viewpoint, and I think even a little uh, village that's underneath the cave. So it should be a really cool experience, but we're gonna start the hike now, and we've got the stairs just right in front, as you can see right there. Let's start the hike. Avocate. just passed by one of the indigenous towns here that are still left the mountains. I mean, you can see they're cooking, they're living. It's just like it was thousands of years ago, the local native Indians, especially living under these big rocks, it kind of serves like a cave and they have their houses built underneath to sort of shelter them in. It's very clear that they've been living there for a long time. You can see that the color of the rocks have already changed because of the smoke that they cook out from. So you can see the rock face is actually kind of black rather than the sort of copper or green color that we see here in the canyon. The view here is spectacular. You can see the nest, the eagle's nest that we went to yesterday from the adventure park. You can see the line for the cable car here, but we are going to keep heading up and hopefully we'll get to the viewpoint at the very, very top. Made it up to the very top of this cliff. Let me show you. That has got to be one of the best views in the entire canyon. It's just completely like there's nobody here and the viewpoint is just amazing. The funny thing is that this place also happens to have the best signal. It's the only place since I've entered the Copper Canyon that I've managed to have a signal of 4G. So 
if you want to, you know, post a video or something, this might be the place to do it. But with a good view like that, absolutely worth it to get up here. Now from the top of the mountain, I saw this little sort of village thing and I decided to walk down here. Turns out that's actually a school, but there is a family that lives right next to the school and the two kids are just there washing their clothes under the tree. It's a hot day, but they're doing it under the shade. So it's really interesting to see how they live here. And I was just talking to the little kid. They speak Spanish, but they also still speak Raramuri, the traditional Indian, the Native American language. So it's, it's remarkable that they've managed to preserve this language for so many years, especially when so much modernization and technology has come in. But you see that the way they live is still very much the same as it was centuries ago. They're washing clothes under a tree tree you know there's very primitive technology around here and it's just incredible their transportation there's no car it's literally a donkey right in front of me making a bit of noise but that's what life is like here in the canyon and that's just the way that they live we've just been walking around the local school here and it's so interesting to see how the school is here in the mountains i mean first off they have sort of dormitories and bedrooms because a lot of these teachers and students live too far away from the school for them to go every day back and forth. So they just stay here uh, from Monday to Friday and then on Saturday and Sunday, they go home. Another interesting thing is that all the classrooms and everything, they're really actually well developed. They're all stacked with books. The chairs and desks are nice. You know, you've got the whiteboard and everything. It's really remarkable how they've managed to build such a good school in the middle of the mountains but it's really interesting to see how these people live they teach in spanish and in raramuri both languages in the school and that's how they preserve the raramuri language well sure enough just like classic weather here in the copper canyon at roughly 3 or 4 p.m the rain comes it's like clockwork it never misses and once the rain comes it gets really really cold i bet it's only like 14 15 degrees celsius right now so I had to put on the sweater again this rain actually creates a whole new different type of copper canyon and the view is still absolutely exceptional so divisadero is a pretty cool place i would say Usually people come here just for 15 minutes on the train. I wouldn't say that 15 minutes is enough time. If you're just looking at the viewpoints and everything, I don't even think 15 minutes is enough. I think you could easily do it in an hour to see all the viewpoints, going on the hanging bridge, seeing the hotel and all of that. Now, if you want to go around the Bisadero, like I did to the little towns, to the other viewpoints, along with the schools and to really see the local culture, that's gonna require about a day trip. So it obviously depends on what you wanna see in Divisadero and how much time you have available. For me, I personally recommend spending more time here. It's beautiful, the view's exceptional, the people are really nice, and you get a really good glimpse into what local culture is like here. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys. I'm waiting for this rain to disappear hopefully soon the clouds are blowing in the opposite direction so hopefully it will be better if you guys enjoyed this video definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos i am super excited for the upcoming videos we're leaving the copper canyon tomorrow today's are actually our last full day but the next destinations around mexico are going to be absolutely phenomenal so i'll see you guys on the next food and travel video bye guys